Look, 1400 years have gone by. And in these 1400 years, we as a community have seen much trial and tribulation. We've evolved as a community. And this sunnah that we have today, the sunnah of Azadari in the way that we have today, is because of your eighth Imam alayhi salam. Had it not been for him, we wouldn't be here as we are today. You've got to remember this. However oppressed the Imams were, the one thing that they maintained was this Aza in whatever situation and circumstance you see them in. The eighth Imam had about two and a half to four years in that space of time, though all eyes were upon him. But he found a golden opportunity to make sure that this Aza survives. And the famous tradition of Ibn Shabib on the first of Muharram that we recite is because of who? The eighth Imam. He teaches us the sunnah of how to prepare for the coming of Muharram and how to invite Sayyidul Shuhada into our houses. But more than that, remember that within these two and a half, three years or so, Imam allowed for all of his Shia to spread across the world. And as they spread, they took this azar with him. Everyone who spread, everyone from one end of the earth to the other end as they went, they took this azar and they spread it into various cultures, different methodologies, different ways of life. Because remember, Islam is something which is abstract. Right? Islam, for example, says do hijab. What to wear, how to wear is different down to your culture. Some people, let's say you're in Iran, you'll wear a chador. Let's say you're in Hijaz, you wear naqab. Let's say, for example, and you can tell, if you have a whole line of people, you can tell that hijab is from this part of the world, that hijab is from Indonesia, that hijab. Why is that? Because Islam is abstract. It gives you a principle, but the way we implement that principle comes down to culture. And you've got to remember, this Islamic civilization that you have is an amalgamation of seven cultures. And so therefore, when people say, I follow the Islamic culture, there is no Islamic culture. Islam is a belief. Its manifestation is found within culture. And the biggest culture today is the culture of Imam Hussein. That every single culture in the world thinks of it as this. You go to India today, right? Every Indian will say Hussein is ours. And our culture, our way of doing Azadari is the only way. You go over the border, you come to Pakistan. In Pakistan, they'll swear to you, this is the way, no other way. And then you go to Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, they'll say, look, the way that we do it here, in Mazar Sharif, for example, this is the way. Then you go to Iran. Then the Iranians will say, look, Azadari, this is the way. You come to Iraq. Karbala will say one, Najafi will say the other. You go to Lebanon. This is the way. And you know what? Take it forward. Go to Turkey and see. I remember being in Turkey. Turkish Muslims say, no, this is Azadari. It doesn't stop here. You go to Macedonia. You look at the Baghdashis, they say this is actually the way of Azadari. You know the beauty is, Hussein has made sure that everyone says Hussein is us. Do you see there's a, there's a philosophy behind this. Imam Hussein has done it in such a way that every single person recognizes Hussein as his. Now come to the Western world and see. Remember this, Azadari exists because of language, because culture exists because of language. With the languages, you find similarities in the way of Azadari, though of course there's gonna be a change. You go to East Africa, for example, Jangbari style of Mata may be different from Mombasa, but the fact of the matter is, the culture is the same because of language. If the language is there, the culture is there. So remember, when people talk about the Islamic culture, Culture is based upon language. And because Islam in and of itself is based upon seven huge different languages. I'll give you an example. What is the biggest culture at the moment in Islam? Malay, Indonesia, right? The most amount of Muslims in Indonesia. The most amount of Saada in Indonesia, funnily enough. Descendants of Imam Hassan, Indonesia. From Hadramut, they moved and they went to Indonesia. Do we know much about them? We don't. Why? Far away, we don't speak their language, we don't know their culture. Right? And at the same time, at this moment in time, the vast majority of them are anti shia right? But that doesn't mean that was always the case. All of this spread because of one person. Who is that person? Eighth Imam. And what does that Eighth Imam say? Look, understand what he says. When Ma'mun tests him, Ma'mun calls all of his people together. He says to him, all his people, he says, is it going to rain? 
They said, look, there's a drought. There's no chance that it's going to rain. He says, right, now it's time for me to show the world that this Ali ibn Musa Rada is a fraud, God forbid. Imagine, Ma'amun's mind is working. Because he says, now I'm going to ask him to go and pray for rain. And all of you guys are saying, there's no sight of rain. So he comes up to Imam, testing the Imam, wanting to insult the Imam, wanting to show the world that the Imam is not an Imam. So what does he say to him? He says to him one thing, there's not, there's not been rain in Tus. Why don't you pray? Ask Allah to bring rain. What does your Imam say, your Gharib Imam? He turns around and says, okay, I'll pray on one condition. He says, what is that? He says, give me three days to fast. He says, why? He says, this is the sunnah of my Jad Rasulullah. He says, so should I go and tell the people that you're going to pray in three days? He says, you can tell whoever you want, far and wide. Go as far as you want, tell whoever you want. Bring them back. There's a person standing there, says, Mawla, aren't you worried? He says, if I was, I wouldn't be hujjat of Allah. Wouldn't be the hujjat of Allah. What does the Imam do? Time comes. Imam comes forward. Everyone's gathered there. Imam raises his hands, prays. You could see clouds begin to move. People begin to run. Imam looks up, says, he says, don't worry. Until you don't get into your house, a drop of water is not going to fall. He says, how do you know? He says, I'm the hujjat of Allah, that's why. But when the Imam was praying, he said something very strange. And when he said that thing, and it began to rain, an old woman looks up and he says, did you hear what he said? You know what the Imam said? He said, Ya Allah, for the haq of this madhloom gharib, bring rain. This water said rain came. Therefore, what he was saying was truth. This man surely is madhloom, and this man is gharib. But because of his ghurba, and because of the fact that he was madhloom, Today, you're here. Had it not been for the pain he went through, today you would not have been Shia. You would not have been sitting here today in this atmosphere, in this circumstance, wanting to listen to Imam Hussein's much less. All of that thawab goes back to one man. Who? Gharibatus.